Hello, hi. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I'm a little under the weather. You hear me sounding a little nasally. Uh, so please bear with me. I'm going to give a few minutes for people to come gather in, gather into the group, gather around. <clears throat> No, I'm plugging, <laughs> I'm promoting. But in the meantime, say hi. Tell me uh, who you are. Say hi. Let me know you can see and hear me, okay? Where you're from. You also can give StreamYard permission to display your name by clicking the link in the description. And um, it will give you instructions. Let me know you can hear me, see me. I sound good. <clears throat> yes. All right. So one more minute and I'm going to start. Y'all know I like to wait till somebody says hi. You probably are, but I just can't see it. And um, I really should have brought my cough drops because my throat is scratchy and my nose is Running. So I have some type of cold I'm fighting. So bear with me. Come and yeah, I can't. Okay. Hi, Bonita. Okay. You can hear me. Fine. Good, good. All right. All right, y'all. So uh, this is Michael Lock Mastery. Um, training and certification group. Welcome any new members. I am Jessica Marshall, the founder, creator. Um, of my block mastery. And it came out of the original trainings that Naturally Beautiful Hair Care had that started in Brooklyn, New York. And um, coining microlocks in 2009 out of Brooklyn, I uh, wanted to have an alternative that also addressed gaps in um, what was already existing. And so at that time, I actually had an attorney and we looked through the web and we looked <laughs> everywhere. Microlox was um, was not a concept. It was like a, a, a new concept that was at least having traction, um, nothing on um, online or anywhere. I started to promote it, um, but I had in mind a specific standard. And so <clears throat> I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about um, how that gets results, and we're going to talk about some common problems that people may have and how we can um, address them. Hey, Amira, how are you? Okay, so <clears throat> again, I'm going to be kind of sounding nasally and coughing, <laughs> but today we are going to talk about DIY microlocks, the methods for the best results, and self-retightening maintenance. We're going to just talk a little bit about that. Um, and uh, DIYers are the people who are like me. You take it upon yourself. You like to have the control um, and, and input into your hair, which you should um, always have access to if you want it. And there are other people that don't. They're like, you know, I'd rather sit in a chair and let somebody do it. And some people are somewhere in the middle. I think I go in between. Um, let me know if you are a, a DIYer or if you are a person that likes to just sit back and be pampered. <laughs> or if you're somewhere in the middle. Also, if you are a current student or current member, um, put a one down there. Let me know who's here. <clears throat> hey, Facebook user, hello. And um, just just let me know. Any DIY, no DIYers? No, none? I know there's a ton of you out there. You just are being shy today. <laughs> Listen, I was contemplating whether I was going to have this because I was feeling terrible this morning. But I said, no, I want to push through and give this information. <laughs> so I'm hoping that y'all interact. Do you appreciate it? All right. So um, let's go to the next. Okay. So who this is for? Um, this is for... Okay, let me get close to the mic because I feel like my voice is getting low. This is for people who are interested in currently self-maintaining um, or retightening their small to micro size locks. So um, people who may be interested or currently, people who may be looking for ongoing professional support, or people who are interested in expanding their knowledge and education. 
Hey, I see you. Okay, you say you're a DIYer. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I wanted to ask you guys, you women, you ladies, you people, what are some of your current challenges and struggles that you may have? Put them in the comments. I want to hear. Um, and I'll also let you know what I've heard over, gosh, I have been behind a chair, I think, for uh, like 14 years. I'd been actively in hundreds of heads of women, hundreds. I kept files and I have a file right behind this, this desk um, almost from the day I started. Um, and then I started moving to electronic files and it's over. It's like a, over 200. It's a lot of women I've actually, and men that have actually hands-on done their hair um, in the New York City area and also in other areas. They've flown in um, and, you know, had some type of service. And so I was able to see different struggles and different challenges and hear from a lot of different types of people about what their challenges were, what their views were on doing their own hair. If they were, some people... Um, where, you know, would go get it professionally done and maybe do it themselves as well. And so some of the struggles that they shared, Amira says, maintaining your parts with DIY retightening. You have wild hair. Yeah. You have beautiful, thick hair. Uh, everybody has different hair too. Um, you're a DIY, but you have traditional locks. Wanted to learn more on micro locks. Okay, good. Um, uh, so different hair types and all these different things are coming to play. Right. So here's some of the common challenges. I'm going to show you guys. You struggle with the amount of time that it takes to do your hair. Yes. Um, my comments are, um, I have to scroll down here. Okay. So let's see what some people have said as well. Some of the common challenges people say is I, like you, the previous post just said, you don't have enough time or energy. Uh, some people are combining locks. Amira had mentioned the parting. Um, they mistakenly co combine locks. It's hard to it's hard to gauge. Uh, some people don't really maybe know how to repair effectively, so they're doing they're trying to do some repair, um, and um, maybe it doesn't stay or it's just somewhere that they could do. Excessive frizziness and fuzziness is a common one. Hairline issues uh, with locks not staying, coming on loose a lot. Different textures throughout the hair can create, uh, you know, different uh, ways of lock the hair locks, different amounts of time, different processes, different everything. So um, sometimes hair can be frizzy or fuzzy or um, unravel, which is one of the points here. But I'll go back up. Holes and locks is a common one. The people who um, mistakenly, unknowingly create a hole in a lock or find holes in their locks and try to fix it, or puffy areas where they're inconsistent um, locking. So, like fat, skinny, fat, skinny in certain areas. Um, somebody here put thinning hair around the edges. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Because I had that as well. And that's postpartum alopecia. Um, and, uh, Postpartum hair loss, I'll say, I won't say alopecia, it's postpartum hair loss, hair shedding. Because while you're pregnant, you have like a boost in um, nutrients and vitamins. So you may have the thickest and longest and nicest nails at that time. And then after you have the baby, <laughs> um, your resting phase also in your hair, your, your hair has different phases where it rests and it grows and it rests and it's all different throughout the head, but it also slows down or it's almost non is like non-existent while you're pregnant and then your hair goes into that phase pretty abruptly and then so what you notice is more hair loss around the edges and I've already had pre um susceptible to it because I used to wear a lot of braids in the past which pro prompted me to call them micro locks so I used to wear micro braids and I wanted these small locks I was seeing with you know this is a company but I also wanted to uh be a little more innovative and be able to do a little bit more with it. So still same concept. Um, and understanding proper product use and routine. I also made a mistakes, mistakes in the beginning with using gel um, back in the day, less jam. I'm dating myself because I started my locks in 2000, 2008. So like there wasn't a whole lot of products. So I was using like jam because my hair, uh, 
<laughs> I had natural hair and my edges, I have 4C hair. So I was always trying to slick it. And I started putting that in my hair and noticing that it was building up and making hard knots. And it was also um, trying to retighten that like, or repair. It just was a hard knot. And it would just create more problems and build up, especially also in the back, picking up fibers and lint off my clothing. So embedded white parts of the locks in the back. It was just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, loose, loosening locks around the edges, hair too soft, definitely have postpartum shedding, right? So those are some of the common, common challenges that people have. And, and additionally, what you guys are mentioning, just uh, see if there's any more. So I wanted to ask if you knew that, make this a little bigger for you to see. Improper retightening can actually damage the hair and follicles. Retightening too frequently is supposed to have another O at two. I spelled too wrong <laughs> for grandma people. Too frequently or infrequently can cause damage. So that means retightening all the time, all the time, like consistently, constantly, or going extended periods of time um, between retightenings. Also, Tool differences can matter, doesn't always, but it can in the strength and health of hair and locks. Additionally, some people, many people have been reporting a certain tools would um, hurt and rip their hair. And uh, those are not the tools I train on or use or have incorporated into Mark Lock Mastery. Um, but if you know, if you're out there and you know, you know, um, you've heard that probably as well. And also that how the microlocks is started may impact the amount and type of repair needed. So that um, I talk about specifically, I'm trying to figure out the, how to make this a little bit smaller, um, specifically because, so I want to do a disclaimer that I'm not trying to um, like offend anyone if they started in a different way or tell them they're doing anything wrong or claim to, you know, like um, there's only, you know, one way, but I, I'm speaking on extensive years of experience um, on having the style also myself on being professionally trained and having a broad view. So it's, it's more like, this is what my, my independent market research has shown. This is what people have, I have experienced and that why I promote a certain technique um, to start so we'll go a little bit more into that, okay? So when you talk about methods that you're using to start and maintain, they should, um, with the locks this small, so I'm talking about this small, I'm not talking about just locks in general. This is a specific niche that even from traditional locks has a lot of differences and a lot of specific care, routine maintenance starting. So it definitely needs to be strong. We're dealing with less hair. We're dealing with a small on a smaller scale. And so... Um, you know, we want to keep these for a long time. They need to be, they need to be strong. They need to enhance and strengthen the lock over time. So as the hair does what it's supposed to do, it should work with it. Um, not, you know, not against it, but I like, um, what I like about micro locks and the process that I went through and that I train on is that the over time, it just kept getting better and better and better. It wasn't really an ugly phase. It was a phase that may be uncomfortable, but each phase had its own beauty. And so it was almost like the longer you go, it just it was just surprise you with, oh wow, this it looks, it will look different and just keep looking better. So that's what I feel any any method should make your hair look better over time. That it should lock consistently throughout the length of the lock and through the entire head. Consistency, I mean that it all looks uh, the same, the same width, the same size all throughout, that it, you know, not too many um, puffy parts or lumpy parts, but that it all is locking. And now we have different textures throughout the head. So I do want to note that some parts of the head may lock faster, especially back here. This is usually thicker. I call it the forest. Um, no matter what texture or curl, it's usually thicker right back here. Also notice way in the back, like right above the kitchen, it's a little softer <laughs> and it's softer around the edges. Although you cannot tightly coil, it's still finer. 
finer and softer. So sometimes it can slip out easier, easier. And sometimes at the top, some people's hair is a little straighter. So all through the hair, it's all these different textures. I'm not really talking about that as far as when it locks and when it's all more matured that they are as consistent as possible. Um, and be healthy for the hair, not damaging. So in my consultations with people, when people may have had concerns because they um, have had um, hair breakage on the edges in the past or hair loss, hair thinning is very common for uh, us as black women in the styles we have. So they would be concerned, like, is it gonna take my hair out? And my, um, my answer and reply would be, it should absolutely be healthy for your hair if it ever does that. First, if it's not an issue that you have going on with your health, if it does that, then that's not being done properly. You should never rip your hair out, should never exacerbate um, hair loss or hair shedding. So if there is a method or technique or something going on, you're doing it and you're finding your hair is con constant, you know, consistently being damaged, um, that that is a problem. So any method should do this. So now, oh, this is some... Um, pictures of just the consistency in the early, this is not even like a year, a year mark, um, just to show that it's locking, it should lock consistently. Um, it may not be at a year mark for different textures. So don't, and no, I don't want people to feel like their hair should look a certain way by a certain time. It should look the way your hair is going to look, um, the best that your hair texture can do. So, um, but I think people will know, okay, this is where it gets, I hope it doesn't get too controversial, but for the best results, is I recommend it to start locks this small with two strand twist, with coils, you know, coils are how you might start traditional locks. And I put braids that's a little bit stronger than coils and two strand twist. Again, I feel like they're specific um, ways that will be most ideal that will lock cylindric cylindrically, make your lock look like a barrel, neat, consistently, and the least amount of like hair coming out. So I noticed that people have had problems in the recent years because it these the, the commonality of these other methods now. So again, back in 2009 or so, there wasn't a lot of people starting, not this small. They were tra tra traditional locks, yes. Bigger size locks, yes. Um, but not on a large scale. So a lot of people have been starting to report that when they start with two strand twists, sometimes the twists don't stay in. Um, the hair completely unravels. Um, it gets really puffy. It doesn't, it doesn't lock as nice, neat and tight. It may like swell out. It does all, all types of different things on coils. It can definitely be weak when it gets to a certain point and not be sustainable long-term for, for the smallest size. Oh, and braids also can lock like flattened, like a braid. So I also, you don't wanna use traditional palm roll. And I know this might be self-explanatory for other people, but I just had to reiterate um, as your long-term maintenance, because obvious, for obvious reasons, again, it's like a coil and that will, not be strong enough. So sometimes people are tempted to like, oh, I need to retighten them, but they're like, your hair starting to twist. So people just twist it. Cool for a temporary thing. You wanna like just make it look neat because you have to, um, you wanna present yourself a certain way, but um, definitely wanna go get it retightened in a method that is going to be sustainable that we talk about. Um, so, I have to make sure I mention that. Any questions so far? Anyone want to share any experiences that you had? Anybody had um really great experience or maybe had I mean any any comments or that you want to add? I know we talked about some of what you guys have some people have experienced with their hair loss, shedding. No. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to stick to obviously a regular maintenance routine. Um, 
Maintenance on a regular basis can be anywhere from four weeks to sometimes even 12. It depends on your hair. Um, I The average is, you know, about six weeks or so, just like you would get a touch up if you had a perm. You know how your hair grows. Um, you know, it may grow differently through different seasons, different times. Um, okay, I'm getting some comments here about buildup. Big one. And your hair unravels a lot, you believe, from your texture. What would you recommend for keeping your locks intact? Okay, so let's go back to build up. One of the main reasons why I, I recommend minimal use of products, and I see the best results of people who literally do very minimal product, partially is because of the build up, and also because the hair is allowed to lock. Uh, at this maximum level. Like it's not anything interfering with how the hair is gonna mat together. And build up, can be, our hair can be more prone to it being more embedded also because of the techniques that we're doing to, to weave the hair into itself. And um, uh, it just, you can't properly get all that out. It just sits in there and it builds up. It does that with any type of locked hair. And so a lot of people, if they put a lot of products in, you see them doing like the lock baths and all these different things. It's not something that every person has to do, um, but you know, if people do it properly, it can be very nice, very beneficial. Um, but I always tell people be mindful of the product. As I said before, especially when it rubs on fibers, fibers stick in. Um, it's very much like, you know, your, our hair is matted. So it is fiber, strands of hair. So the same thing with strands of, of other things, but also it'll pick up and accumulate things in the um, environment. It'll just have like a sticky, it'll, it'll attract it. And... <clears throat> So you might find that some of it comes out while you wash, but you might find that you have to do something deeper. I posted and shared in the past about an apple cider vinegar kind of rinse that I do um, sometimes, very rarely, but on my daughter, especially because she's eight and she just she doesn't know about hair. She'll get she'll throw hair, the dirt in her hair. Like she doesn't care. So I was noticing a lot of buildup and I <clears throat> would do that routine. Um, where on the part specifically where it was embedded in, it would help, but you don't obviously want to do that too often. Um, and you said your hair unravels and you believe it's from your texture. What would you recommend? So man, I tell you, I'm, I'm please, the cold is feeling really crazy <laughs> in my head. So please bear with me. Um, so hair texture, um, you know, every every person is different. Also, oil secretion could be different. Um, but from basic like biology, we know like the, the the shape of the follicle. So like let's say white people, for instance, with straighter hair, people with straighter hair will have the oil secrete. Their hair will be oil oilier. Um, they tend to secrete more oil. Blah blah blah. But we are women of color. Have, we have all of the different varieties. So sometimes people do have a little oily hair, or they have a hair texture that's looser. And that interferes with the locking process a little bit more. Um, the the hair uh, may take a little longer to lock. So I had a client, she's actually on one of the slides I'll show you, whose hair took a little over two years to fully lock. But we had to be um, very consistent with um, during her maintenance to get that hair pulled back in the lock, keep um, the routine and maintenance, needing to ensure that what we were doing was not interrupting. Um, <clears throat> slickening, silkening, oiling up those strands so they weren't going to stick. Um, a lot of people seem to have like, um, it's hard for them to not use a lot of product. They always think that product is what's going to get it results. It's actually a little bit different when you step over to this land. It's allowing your hair cl and cleaning it, water, rinse, you know, and maybe a little bit of natural um, things to seal in moisture is what is all that's needed. You don't need anything else. So sometimes if you find yourself putting in more things um, that you may want to reduce that. But if you're not and you're like, it's still having difficulty, keep your hair clean. Remember the oil is the issue. So there's one trick. One thing is a little secret. Um, <laughs> I did in the past, I had a little, pro I had a product line and I discontinued it, but to be continued future. One of the, one of the things was called, um, a lock accelerator spray. And I was finding that you probably already, maybe some people already know this, but <clears throat> things like sea salt um, was able to uh, take 
the excessive oil out and help accelerate locks without damaging, without making it dry and brittle. So that was in the formulation. Um, it's just a little, little thing I wanted to say. So there are things you can do to kind of absorb the excess oil if that's what's happening with your hair. Uh, how often do you do AACV rinse if you're very active? So apple cider vinegar rinse, I say it depends on a whole bunch of factors, but I would not do it weekly. I wouldn't do it. We would do it for my daughter like once. Uh, it's just probably been months, maybe almost a year since we've done it. But every few months, like it's it's not something that we do on a regular basis. So we kind of make it kind of strong. I dilute it down with the wash, but it's still strong. And um, I use it as I see it needed. So I'm seeing, I'm noticing the white buildup. I'm noticing that it's embedded and it's uh, a significant amount, then I'll do it. If it's something a little bit, if I wash it, you'll notice it might just be washed away. So it was something that I was using to help break down the oils and balance out and soften up her hair on occasion. And that would be every few months. Um, it's, you know, people tend to say it strips your hair and um, it does all these things. So you don't want to use it excessively. Well, I'm going to get back to my list really quick. Understand that kind of goes to the second point that I was supposed to be going on. Understanding how your lifestyle and specific needs will affect your outcome. People uh, sometimes are very um, active and sweat a lot and um, have routines and do the different things where <clears throat> it could actually um, interfere with uh, how their hair, how quickly their hair locks, how it locks, how much maintenance they might need. I always tell people your lifestyle should shouldn't have to drastically change. You're just going to have to do some things differently in the beginning stages of the process. So um, people who swim, um, there's a lot of humidity. Uh, if you're going on vacation, so submerging your hair, uh, your texture, all these different things. So you, you want to know, obviously, certain other methods may not be they're not going to be ideal because number one we are dealing with a small scale but also because of these other factors so you want to find something that is going we talk about the interlocking method is what we use to um to have the strongest hold on us unlock this size but that also impacts your maintenance routine understanding what is realistic for your hair type texture and density sometimes people um maybe I don't know. Maybe sometimes people aren't sure how their hair is going to look, how it's going to lock, how it's going to swell, and maybe the expectation won't match the results. So with just a, a little discussion with a professional, with a little bit of or maybe research or discussion with other people with similar hair types, you will get a better sense of what maybe perhaps with size, what, what you um, need to do specifically for your hair type. So for instance, I always say the tightest curl pattern can have um, the small, the, anybody can do anything they want, but it tends to do very well with the smallest size. Lock. So um, I used to do this in, in the consultation process where we would find the ideal size. If someone says, go the smallest that you can, we find the small, I find the smallest that's appropriate for their hair type and texture and tell them that, that um, what is realistic and what would, the hair would be conducive to. My hair at curl is actually almost exactly the size of my locks. And it's kind of, um, I know it's teeny tiny, but I have 4C hair. And what it did was it actually helped my lock, my hair locked quickly. It locked more consistently. What I noticed with it, looser type of, um, really loose curls, going small, sometimes um, the hair swelled beyond what the pattern was doing and it would be more prone to like puffiness or like a poodle effect. All these things would happen. But if it was just adjusted in size, the hair would be um, come down a little bit and lock a little bit different. So things things do affect um, sometimes how your outcome will look and or what you want. Because you may not want them teeny tiny or you may not you may want them within a certain range. And uh, research tools, methods, and their long-term results, 10 years plus, what's been done. So <laughs> I always have to take a deep breath because 
I don't want to make any, I don't like hurt feelings or anything, but I, I started, I was away from like YouTube and stuff. And then I started to come back once I came back, um, life settled a bit from being a single mom and going through the madness I was going through for those years. And I was seeing all, I was like, Oh, people are starting to hear that way. And then I was seeing all these problems and I was wondering if people knew or had seen others have that, it, their hair started that way for a long time. So, um, and what the results were, because I kind of think sometimes people were gauging on what was convenient for them at the time or what was easy for them at the time, and maybe didn't put enough energy on like what was going to give them the long-term results um, that they wanted. If, if, if you choose to have your hair for years, I have my hair for 14 years. It's been 14 years of wonder, like, you know, like a, a nice relief and from having to deal with it. But maybe if it was giving me problems, if I started with a different technique, I would have had, it would have been crazy. And I would have been very upset and stressed out and trying to fix things all the time. So I was noticing people needing to fix things. And um, so I just tell people, you can do whatever, again, do whatever you want with your hair. But I'm only speaking to the people who are like, you know, I may not know, like, I, I want to know, like, what would be ideal to start my hair with based on what you've seen. And I really want to have um, a certain type of result. And then seek professional support if you need it. Um, oh, y'all have so many comments here. Uh, you said that's you. I don't know which, um, what was you. And then, so would you recommend bigger locks for looser curls? I tend to, but not big, big. I mean, we get in the micro lock range. It's always specifically, I was thinking of a range of sizes that were smaller than maybe regular interlocks or traditional size locks because when you get to over a certain size, the reinforcements become, the need for like a stronger base becomes necessary. So um, so within that range, I would go error on a little bit. I wouldn't go super teeny tiny with someone with looser curls. No, I would do test and I would, you know, test sizes and say, is this what you want? We have, con that's what consultations are good for discussing what it is that they want. Also, sometimes if they've never had locks before, they may not know what it takes for the retightening. They may not understand um, like that process. And, you know, obviously the smaller you go, any amount of hair is going to, you're going to need to go more frequently because if my hair grows a, a half an inch at this size, that's a lot of uh, rotations. That's a lot of um, more than if it was bigger and it had a half an inch of hair. Also my time in a chair, my time doing it. If I'm looking for a neat look with small locks, you can actually achieve that within a range of different sizes. So it don't necessarily have to be just that one tiny, tiny size to get what you really want, the versatility, the fullness. You can, you have some wiggle room. So I just tell people that, um, you know, to, to find what is most compatible for the results they're seeking. Um, you just joined the live in case you missed. Can someone? No, I'm going to cover. I think I'm going to cover unraveling, but I can uncover unraveling more. Um, if you have 4C here, you're noticing a lot of unraveling and frizz. It looks like a fro. Okay. So I was mentioning earlier, I have 4C hair. 4C hair, I don't want to use the term good hair, but it is... In this in this world of small locks, it is like what people call it's like the the it's really great. I'll put it that way. It's really great. Hair should be locking um, really well. So if you're noticing um, frizz and unraveling, then there might be something with the foundation of it, with how it was started, and it might be something with your maintenance. I don't know. Um, I, I don't. I can't say exactly, but um, if it but. There is a time where your hair will be a, look like um, an afro, not an afro. Um, there's a time where your hair will be frizzier in the beginning stages. Um, I wish I had could pull pictures of my like three months in my hair. Uh, it's up, it's out. My hair was four inches, so it wasn't dropped down. It wasn't fully locked. It wasn't hanging down. It was all it was out. But what I what was mattered more was that my hair was in the lock the foundation and wasn't a whole lot of hair out. So if that's what you're noticing that it's just out and up, then it's okay. And if a little bit fuzzy because the fuzziness is the locking process and it's okay. But if you're noticing it's coming out, you got spots of loose hair, patches of like that's that needs to be addressed. It should all be in the pattern. It's okay if it's a little bit 
fudgy. It's swelling and expanding because your curl is is locking and it's it's getting in. It's um, not fully formed, so it will expand and it will expand from your installation. So it goes through all these different phases before it it pulls all the way in and then starts to you know come down and hang down a little bit. So to manage that, you might need repair if it's unraveling. Oh, you did say unraveling. Yeah, some repair, just pulling in the hair um, and your routine. Don't do too much. <laughs> Don't do too much um, at all because it sounds like your hair might still be new. You really, all you need to do is make sure your scalp is clean, your hair is clean, and that's it. Allow it to lock. Don't put anything all extra in. A lot of the products and stuff that are not are not really good for, especially people who have newer locks. I always have to tell people that because I can see. And then you might end up like inter interrupting and affecting your what your results could actually really truly be because you're doing too much too soon. So make sure that you are not doing that. Makes sense. She just covered keeping oil production down to address unraveling. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, I'm a mom too. I'm not consistent wearing a scarf. You don't have to. The thing is, you don't have to wear a scarf or bonnet. Um, no, I I haven't slept with a scarf on for a few weeks. It's that should not be the issue. But um, I mean, I you sleeping regularly. I'm assuming you're not doing this in your sleep. <laughs> um, that shouldn't be an issue. And actually, sometimes it's okay. Um, because it, it your hair is just it's just helping it. But um. If you need extra support in certain areas, like you're working out, you're starting to sweat, um, you may just, your hair is really fragile. You can tie it down in that area, but you want to allow it to lock. You want to allow it to swell and expand and do what it needs to do. So it's just not a style where it's like you have to keep a bonnet or a scarf on. I tend to like bonnets because the hair can move freely in new locks. Um, scarves, really, when it's a little longer, you want to keep it flat, but it's it's not something that would make or break your hair at all. And um, okay, so let me see if I addressed. Oh, so these are some of um, the people that have self retightened. So remember, I was telling you about that client. She's right here, um, Tony. She has baby soft curly. She might barely be in the fours. I think she might be in the threes, like her natural hair when she came in. You could see the curl and it was really fine and really soft. And when she got her, um, so I did her installation. I started her and I trained her. So she self-maintains. Everyone on this page, um, everyone on this page I started and, and trained them to self-maintain. So she had really soft hair and she was instructed to, um, because her hair was extra soft, not let water cascade down her hair, you know, um, not submerge it. And she said she was going on vacation. I said, do you think that you could abstain from swimming and, and that you could keep your hair kind of controlled, like out of the water, and only when you're washing it with a with like a handheld shower thing? And she was like, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to swim. And we're Facebook friends. I go on Facebook. I scroll. Now, <laughs> it was a long time ago. I see her with one of those glamour pictures under a waterfall with all the water. You know how much gallons of water? <laughs> and she's just like posing. I was like, I commented. I was like, girl, <laughs> what are you up submerging your hair for? And she was like, oh my gosh, y'all, my lactician, my lactician is on um in the comments. Oh my gosh. Was, but the good thing is she she knew she meant. <laughs> She knew she messed up at that point, but no, she was very positive about it. And she came back to, she came back and she went, came to her appointment with me. And she was like, I know, I know you're going to have some heavy lifting. And she was prepared because you know what happened? Like half of her locks came out, <laughs> especially in the front. And she'll, and it, it was, she could speak for herself. She's still her hair. Oh my gosh. What is her hair? Almost, almost 10 years. She, um, just recently has gotten locks to stay. Her hair fuzzes up all the time. Her edges needed two years of pulling in or more. It was constantly coming out. But I always say keep staying determined. Keep making sure your routine is on point because you can have, um, I don't know how clear you can see. I'll make it bigger. You can have um, fine, now, you know, 
neat, consistent locks with curly hair, with type three something hair, with um, fine hair. She has fine. Okay, so this is not an update picture of um, one of my other dear clients who became a model for me. Her hair is like all the way down her shoulders now. So I, I don't have an updated picture. Her hair is fine and soft as well. Took a lot of pulling and, and um, co coaxing the hair into the lock. Um, and uh, oh, I forgot her name for a second. Shoot. My brain just went blank. Um, Love Lynn and uh, Keisha. And my my head just went blank. <laughs> and uh, Milan. So um, all different hair types. And Keisha's more like a 4C. This is an old picture that was in, um, we used for magazine spread. Um, Sophisticus black hair. Because uh, I just, she, have, she was able to healthily color her hair and do all these things, but she was also trained to self-maintain. So I just wanted to, to kind of show the diversity and the range of people who um, have been able to self-maintain and keep the integrity and the consistency and the beauty of their hair um, and done done well. So let me see your, um, <laughs> your comments. Oh, um, you, no. Um, definitely... It definitely could be the products I'm using. I think I'm a little heavy handed on the rose water spray. Yeah. Um, sorry, y'all. My mouth is so dry. I've never, well, I never use rose water spray. So again, I had, um, through my clients, I've been hearing about the trends and stuff that would happen. I don't think it's bad or anything. I just, it was just always interesting for me to see what people started to incorporate based on what they usually watched or saw on social media or YouTube. And I would always just say, if it affected how their hair was during our retightening sessions, I would tell them, you know, um, you may not want to do that. But not everything that everyone else does is right for you. But I don't necessarily think rose water is um, necessarily a problem. Whatever oil you're adding to the water, it is an oil. You could think about how much oil it is and what it's going to do. I used to put lavender drops in my water when I, because I use water to set my curls. That's the only thing I ever told people to use. No setting lotion, nothing like that. Just water and you spray your hair, you know, roll it up. It would get a, a tighter curl, but I would put lavender in it just for fragrance. It wasn't for anything else. So when I saw the rose water, I was trying to figure out what the with the other beneficial properties besides it calming, maybe scalp if there's inflammation, but it really isn't something that's necessary. Again, um, if you're noticing issues with your lock-in process, scale back on products. I'm going to, the, the video I showed you in a few slides, I'll show you, of the woman's hair. Um, my other client, she has barely used hair, this one, any product in her hair at all whatsoever. I'm blocking it. I know I'm blocking the thing. Let me get my picture out. And so um, her hair was also a looser curl. So she had, um, she has a little bit bigger than mine, but they're still micro size, still small. Her hair swelled a little bit more. So the bigger size was, was good for, to capture all her hair in so that it could look like that. She uses like nothing nothing. She has no buildup. Her hair locked nicely. I just say that to say like, you don't need anything to have really nice, um, nice locks. I'm going to make it that size. Um, so let me go back to my slides. Actually guys, I'm going to start wrapping it up because I just got a notification about a meeting that I have. So I just want to let you know. So I want you to think about what you're looking to accomplish what it takes, and if you can or are willing to do it. I think one of the worst things to do is um, try to do something that you realize that you don't want to do or you can't do, and now you have to find a way you know, or you might need some support. So I just you know, want people to be realistic. Also, if what they're seeking, so sometimes people have thinner hair and they're looking at goals and inspiration of people who have thicker hair or different density. Um, and so it just requires them to think about what can be accomplished and what they would need. And if they think that they might need a professional to help them with sizing to maximize the fullness or to help them with retightenings because the routine is going to, you know, um, you know, be, or they might not 
you see someone who can maybe do the edges a bit better and pull the hair in, but without damaging it. So that's some, a point that I wanted to make. And I say, you don't want to just have any locks. You want the locks of your dreams. I think, I don't know what other people want, but I knew, I knew I was one of the people that always did my hair like, um, so myself and I always change up the side, this, the style of it. But I also knew like, if I didn't like something, I didn't want to have to sit with it. And when I went on my consultations to find someone, um, when I was going, when it was just sister locks, it was just sister locks. And I went, I was like, mm. then I found someone who had what I wanted. And I went and got the consultation and realized I could achieve that because the, the professional was telling me, um, I was like, I want to invest and I want to make sure that I started right or that I get the support that I need. I also knew I wanted to do it because I had naturally beautiful hair care, just doing like twists for other people and little things as a side hustle. But I knew at some point that I wanted to be able to learn and um, do it right, but also have access to someone to do it for me as well. Because I knew I wasn't going to want to do it all the time. And then I might need support. So, um, oh, yeah, <laughs> y'all came with the comments and I didn't. Um, you love the magazine? Yeah. Yeah. Your locks are very dry. What can you use? And you know, think about what makes dry hair. Number one, locks are matted hair. So matted hair is not going to look like hair that's not matted. It's not going to have the same luster. It's not doing the same process. You're not doing the same process to maintain it. So you're not going to have the glisten and shine. So number one, think about if it's real, like, is it really dry or is it just not what I'm used to seeing? If it feels like it's super duper dry, you can um, think about what you're using. You can think about what's going on, but I rarely have ever seen anyone whose locks are like brittle and like falling apart. Usually, um, and like I said, some people don't ever use anything and they have luster and sheen, their hair is fine. So to think about what are you, what are you saying is dry about it? Um, and I do believe in things like tea rinsing. I always promote tea rinsing. If your hair is mature enough, you can do a steam treatment. You could do things like, I've done things like avocado. I mean, I do natural stuff. And um, I do it on myself first before I tell other people. And then I tell, and then I kind of do my own little research with people who are willing to try it. I don't just say things off, off the cuff. I also tell people it may not work for you. If I wouldn't do avocado treatment with Tony or Milan because they're hair, but um, I might with uh, Keisha or, you know, if she, I would tell her it could work for her, but I've also know their hair and I know, um, you know, starting it, but you can think about your routine, think about what other factors could be making it dry. And then I would say, I do like a tea rinse to condition, pH balance your hair. Sometimes the water is hard. Um, where you are, uh, things could be leaving a film on your hair that you could see or not see. If you're using cast out soap, that can tend to leave a film. Um, and um, some other more clarifying soap uh, wash might be needed. You might need to dilute down your product. It's a bunch of different things. So I would try to switch up. I would examine what I'm doing and um, make a change. Is there a certain amount of locks to be considered micro locks? No, mm -mm, I don't do that. Okay, so I don't do that in my lane. So we never had an issue for the 13 plus years of doing it or hundreds of people. I'm just speaking from my experience. We, I, I, maybe it's me also the way I learn and see that drives me crazy to say a certain number. Uh, I never really counted my locks. I think I'd start or three, 400, but it could look different on someone else's. I have clients whose heads range dramatically in size. They're beautiful. I'm not saying they have big heads or little heads, but people have different size heads, different size scalp coverage, a lot of scalp. I have some uh, client who has a lot of scalp. It even like folds in the back. She's so, and that all that has hair. So we literally have to like move the scalp up and get more rows in. 400 locks on her is going to look different than 400 locks on someone. Maybe, maybe they have the same size head, but now they have less density in hair. The hair is not as thick. The hair is thicker. So I steer away from those things that I, I talk about and promote are things that I know show results. They don't cloud up and confuse people and aren't just unnecessary because I think sometimes that gets so much in the way that it actually impacts results because people are so focused on like, I need to have it this for it to be that for it to be that. 
Um, the main reason why I even said micro locks because I don't use the sister lock tool. I'm not trained by them. I'm not promoting as them. I'm not mis misrepresenting myself and I'm respecting their brand and mine. So I don't um, have to like say I'm competing. I just say we just use a different term and different tool, different tool, innovate, you know, reattachment, extensions, all those things I can, I can do that maybe sister locks doesn't do. So I don't necessarily say that that's the only, the reason is the size of num the number of locks. It's more um, how I brand it in and what standard I use and what um, I may do, like the innovations, the different tool uses, the uh, you know people who are trained under me are able to they can complement things. So we don't, I don't come out and say like that. So that's the conversation. I also glad I kind of steered away from. I was uh, absent from YouTube for a long time to deal with. Many people can relate being a single mother, <laughs> raising a child and going through craziness. I was, I was off and I was out of the discussions and I was kind of seeing people, people creating this divisiveness and all these different differences. And um, how do I explain it? And I said, well, why do we have that mind frame that it has to definitely stick to the brand and represent it well if you are in a brand that requires you to especially especially use their tool and use their system by contract but um i don't get into discussion about one thing not being this or not being that i do say i do let people know that i don't have the tools never use my head and i don't have that system but it's not a size that differentiates they both are interwoven locks and sister locks tent does have um different patterns and rotations and i i my method doesn't incorporate all those differences. It just use it just kind of boils it down to what I found to be effective. So that's that's basically what I can speak on my branding of Michael Ox. Again, um, I can't speak for anyone else when anyone else has it, it involved in, in into over the years, but that was the original um, concept when we first started out. Oh, sorry, I'm wrong one. Okay, T rinse is nice. Yes. Um. Yeah, I was on YouTube. LOL, I gotcha. Okay, but some reason I can't scroll scroll down all the way to the bottom. Okay, so let me go really quick to let y'all know what the Michael Lock Mastery Training Program is. Um, for those who may not know, it's a self-paced online training and course platform. It consists of these free, uh, this free training platform as well as brand, um, paid different types of courses and programs. And I, it came out of the original microlog branding I was doing from the trainings that began in 2009. And this program helps individuals learn and master professional level, industry proven microlock techniques and maintenance and become microlock mastery certified. So we provide professionals with support and opportunities for continued growth and marketing through our platforms and trainings. And we are a community of positive motivated and driven individuals who have a goal, I'm, I'm still in a speech, who have a goal of mastering our skills and empowering ourselves and each other. Um, energy, if y'all know about hair and energy, <laughs> I'm big on that. I honestly think some of the results I've seen other people and myself or whatever, it was because they had good energy and vibes also into their hair, like love and care and like you call me crazy, but I've seen, I've it's like something I've seen. Um, and so have you looked into the possibility of paying for the courses with Carter? Um, yeah, I will look into that. Thank you for that Facebook user. I don't know who said that. Um, but i definitely have to do it through another program because I can't become, um, an enforcer of payment plans. It's very draining. And I try as best as I can to work with people, but it just it definitely would be something I would like to outsource. So self, the self retirement and maintenance program that we have includes, um, let's say intro, <laughs> but we introduce, we talk about, it's actually like an educational program as well, not just the technique you can just find on YouTube, but we talk about two types and differences. You get a tool, get my tool, industry proven best techniques for long-term quality results, one-on-one um, -on -one support and ongoing support for life. You for life. When you're a part of the program, you have access to it. Reduce pricing on other courses. If people decide that they want to take a course, you've already covered retightening. If you, you might want to venture off and, and do more with it, and then you have access to directory listing and marketing for retightening. 
um, I actually changed it from self-retightening to retightening and self-maintenance because the retightening course is going to be able to give you a retightening certificate. And we'll go through, if you are interested in that, what it includes. So in that you can do and apply to your, your work or create a business, whatever you want with it. Um, so exclusive Michael Locker Mastery hair tool you get, you get supplies, you get 24 seven access, individual access to individual and group coaching. So how many times like I go, I don't even look at stuff sometimes on YouTube anymore. Back in the day, you know, you don't really know. Sometimes what you see may need to be tailored or troubleshoot or really know that like, I, that that source of information, um, you know, has vast, expansive knowledge that spans, you know, like just different things you kind of don't know. And people have been running into trouble because maybe they see the person's hair looks really nice, but then that is not going to happen on them or they don't really know how to have it adjusted for different hair types. So just different things that come up and people um, get stuck and they would like some support. I always thought that that's where something more formalized and, um, you know, could help and also give you open up doors for more things because of the, the, cert the certification program of it. Um, oh, private members only actually you, I might need to take that point off, uh, but we do have a private members only. If you do take more courses, you get into that and we are getting ready to start with the curriculum in there as well to support and enhance directory listing in our microlock directory. That's an option that could come if you um, do this, if you join the business bundle, all these different things. You have all these perks and discounts and ongoing training opportunities. It's not just like I'm teaching you something, I'm giving you a real cheap price. You're going to do it. You're going to mess up. You can't come to me for help. You can't come to me. Like, um, no, I actually have a one-on-one -on -one bonus call with someone today after this um, that's included in their course and they can use it any way they want. And so I just wanted to share that. Oh, the price this is all thrown up on it. <laughs> if you decide, don't get deterred by that price. Cause I always tell y'all just wait to the end. Um, but it's a package. It's not just something like $150 training and you don't even know the person te teaching you on techniques that you're going to need to repair like somewhere else. But for the whole program, it, that the $4.99 price. And then I'm giving whoever wants to sign up because we opened up the doors to the retightening program. And I wanted to make sure people knew that you actually would get a certificate in retightening. And you, because you're, you're learning retightening methods on others and yourself. And if you have it and you want to learn about you, will, part of it will be retightening your own hair with guidance and check. So submit, like we're reviewing what you're doing with your own hair and you still know the technique that you can apply. So um, knocking off the um, $100 from it with a code and then a one-on-one -on -one session that usually will be charged. Let me take the, move this so you can see over a hundred dollars. It's starting at a hundred. The coaching is going, that's free plus a hundred dollars off. So if anybody was interested, if you knew when I launched this in 2020 and we had like a lot of people enroll because things were shutting down, um, some of those people in the, in the slide I showed you were part of that and they took the course and it's something that they've been using to this day, extremely, but they were able to provide, um, testimony, but it was, it was an opportunity, not just to like learn a technique. They chose not to just Google something or go on YouTube, but they chose to, um, invest because they knew that there's something that they can grow and that they knew, I, well, cause I, um, trained them and I did their hair. So it was a credible source, someone who had the experience and, um, long-term results that they were, you know, looking for in a quality and a level that they wanted. So I think that is a really good. So if you decide you want to do that, I have a code that takes hundred dollars off. And I decided to do it till Sunday. I didn't want to make it one day because you, nobody, you know, if you want to do it, you have, you can think about it. You can do it before Sunday. If not, it's okay. And it's retie re MM 100. If you decide you're going to go to michaelockamastery.com and you will see retightening, self-maintenance, you can look at look at things there. You can look at the site. We're still, it's a new um, launch of the site. So we're adding, the content is um, being added ongoing. So we had another platform that we used and we are enhancing things. So just the FYI, um, 
more content. The blogs will be added on there. It'll be connected to more um, resources. We already have it connected to the directory if you want to check some things out. And I will be putting a couple of blog posts up um, with links to our YouTubes. And just so, you know, if you ever wanted to come and check it out on another off time, um, and it will link to microlocks.com, which is also being added as well. So both spellings, that's us. <laughs> so um, we will make, uh, I will make as much resources as possible. But if you decide that you wanted to come to the program, get connected to our network and all the expansion and exciting things we're doing and get a foot in. Because if you did take this self-retightening and you decided, wait a minute now, I want to either expand my business. I'm going to take the full training. You don't have to pay the full price because you've already paid for a portion of learning how to retighten. That will be taken off and um, probably some more bonuses. You'll have access to all that. I just tell people that's what sets it apart from just saying I can learn it from YouTube. There's people who really like want to invest in a credible training that plugs them in and teaches them, you know, best practices and techniques so they can learn it the the, I don't want to say the right way, but they can learn it a right way. Because again, I'm, you know, people have options and do things the way that they want to do it. But um, if they like the results that they see with our program or what I speak on, then you can know that that's what you're going to get. Otherwise, it's also this free group here. And I'll continue to add this kind of information Um on a regular basis or a team member will come in and we'll give you value. Sometimes we pop in free eBooks. We do different things uh, from time to time randomly. It's like my email list. I just gave someone like gave out an eBook like a month or two ago for opening up the emails and not <laughs> jumping off. I was just like, here you go. Here's a free um, success, plan success planner for your new year. And um, that's something that people used to pay for. So I feel like um, as much value as I can get, but I've also um, when I want to know that this is a lot of years of investment of like passion, passion about Michael Ox to the point where I was like, attorney, let's get this trait. Like I didn't decide to go for it with it. Now it's all over the place. Um, but I'm really still passionate about this high quality skills. And I'm over into my next session. I actually have to go. I have an appointment with one of the students now. So um, thank you all. Oh gosh, you guys have such good questions. Ah. Um, another issue, your retires, you need to use parting comb to define my parts, but sometimes you get lazy. You just want to grab and go because you're in the rhythm and parting slows them down. Yeah. It depends on how long your hair. I, I never use a comb to part my hair, but then my hair is longer, but if it's shorter, you might need to, um, grabbing and going, that's up to you. You know, like these, these grid pictures with this like picture perfect, um, that's that's great. I, I focus on that in the training. We focus on that in our installations, but we also focus on the, the locks itself too. And it's your head. So if you're like, look, I'm not big on <laughs> it needs to be exactly perfect, but I'm more invested in the quality of the lock. That's, that's your um, choice to make. And I actually respect that more than just someone showing that they can part really well, but that the quality of the hair over time continues to get better and better and better and just looks really good. Um, so with that being said, y'all, thank y'all for joining. I was on here for way long. You guys stuck it through, um, who, who stayed to the end for over an hour. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks for your questions. You can continue to add questions in the comment section, and I'll um, try to address them as much as possible. And um, if you're catching the replay, put replay and ask your questions there as well. Thank you guys so much, and um, have a rest. have a good rest of your day. Bye.